My name's Guy Kesteven and I've been a professional mountain bike and kit tester for nearly 25 years. And today, the bike I've already got out of a box is Mondraker's Crafty R. 150mm travel, Bosch powered E trail bike. I mean, first things first, just look at the lines of this bike. I mean, Mondraker have always had a really, really beautiful aesthetic about them. And the fact they've managed to carry it onto an e-bike is really, really impressive. You've got this sort of signature triangle bracing strut and the front that's just moulded into this super slim top tube. And then perfect alignment there into the seat stays. You know, it's just such a dramatic looking bike and the fact that Mondraker have managed to carry that through onto an e-bike I think is really really impressive I mean talk about design language all that kind of thing as much as you want but it just looks absolutely belting and it comes in not just in the black and white almost also comes in an orange and black colorway as well uh, this is the basic model of crafty uh, there are crafty RR and there are crafty carbon bikes as well so this is the easiest way to get onto a Bosch powered uh, full travel e-bike from Mondraker. So at the rear, you've got 150 mil travel. It's uh, zero suspension. Uh, you know, it's the suspension system that started out on the Summum downhill bike. It's been gradually refined and updated over the years. Uh, you've got a big linkage running across the bottom there through this uh, gap in the seat tube. And then you've got this single piece upper linkage there uh, welded together in the middle for maximum stiffness. And it's a float DPX2 rear shock. It's a 205mm I2I shock with a 65mm stroke uh, with medium rebound on it and a relatively light compression tune and just a 0.2 volume spacer in there. You've got twin reinforcing struts there. You've got a big reinforcing plate up the back. Uh, Enduro Max bearings throughout with 17mm axles. So it's a properly tough rear end on this. And But, you know, they've still managed to get these really nice slim tubes on there. And I have ridden this bike briefly already. Well... You know, it's not box fresh. I mean, it's come to me straight away, but unfortunately, I just couldn't resist having a couple of spins on it. So I've cleaned it up and put it back in the work stand to do a proper unboxing on. But, you know, just it well, because I've wanted to get a Mondraker on the channel for so long, uh, I was just a bit too excited and went out, you know, only gently on it because my legs still, uh, I've got to be a little bit steady on my legs still. But oh, first impressions were absolutely astounding. You know, great pedal transfer, great power transfer. And obviously you've got this uh, Bosch Generation 4 motor uh, giving plenty of boost now, 85 newton metres on that, plus the overrun. It really, really was helping my leg, uh, you know, with the acceleration uh, out of tight, muddy sections and stuff like that. So that's my excuse for uh, already having ridden it. Apologies for doing that. Uh, but then up front, uh, I mean, this is... Uh, you know, in terms of the Mondraker full suspension e-bikes, this is kind of their trail bike line. There's also the level sort of park free ride bike, which gets 170 mil travel at the rear end. But even on this 160 mil travel front end, you're getting uh, the new Fox 38 uh, performance fork. You can see there these super thick 38 mil stanchions for extra stiffness. It's again, it's EMTB tuned. Uh, you've got a grip damper in there, so that's the well, it's the simpler damper, but uh, you know, you still got plenty of comp low speed compression damping on there. And then you've got this, uh, it's, a, it's interesting, this it's a mix of QR and a bolted axle, so uh, belt and braces on there. And then you've got a fit grip rebound damper on the bottom, so you know. Like I say, I've only ridden it briefly, but so far that feels like a really, really supportive and, as you'd expect, super accurate uh, tracking fork. It's a 44mm offset on the fork there, so it adds a bit of wheelbase and sort of baseline stability, but also because it brings everything more in line with the steerer, actually makes the front end feel more agile, especially with that super short stem. In terms of geometry, I don't, I kind of don't want to emphasise the numbers too much. I mean, Mondraker were the, one of the first brands to, well, they were the first brands to properly Properly uh, go for the super short stem, super long reach. They called it forward geometry. They they just introduced it on a few on a handful of bikes the first year they did it, but it was such an instant hit with all testers and reviewers like me and so many others that they you know rapidly expanded it throughout the range and then you know other manufacturers have followed suit. So the angles might not seem crazy radical. It's got 65.5 degree head tube and then 76 degree. Uh, seat tube on there in terms of effective angle uh you know but 490 mil reach on this large and then this super short 35 mil stem on there i mean 
I think I'm going to need to do uh, some uh, headset space removing on that and get the bars a bit lower because, uh, you know, it, again, it's quite a low head tube. That's another characteristic you often see on Mondraker bikes. But, I mean, I can literally remember the first time we had a Mondraker Foxy on Bike of the Year and it had the worst spec. I mean, it had, I think it had a double chain ring when everything else had a single chain ring. It was something like X5 or X7. It didn't have a dropper post. It had skinny wheels with Maxxis Ardent tyres on there. I mean, it was almost like the uh, product manager had dared us to uh, just go, but this is the best handling, best suspension function bike on test. And that makes it the most fun. That makes it the best bike on test. It almost dared us with, you know, the, the sort of componentry was that much out of step. And, you know, we had a fair old discussion about it because there were far, far better spec bikes for the money on the test. But end of the day, the Foxy just absolutely blew us away. It blew us away uphill, downhill, and it just it nailed corners, even on like semi-slick ardent tyres. The other bikes, we were in, out in Finale uh, in the rain and it was brutal conditions, but it just, it was always the bike that just like, whipped through a corner, breaks off, or just never gave us a bad moment, or saved us when we did push it too hard, when other bikes were just smashing into the ground all around it. It was just laughing. And uh, needless to say, you know, that became our bike of the year that year. And so, you know, don't just uh, headline the numbers. I mean, they are good numbers, don't get me wrong. They're perfectly decent numbers, but don't just headline on the numbers here. You know, it's the balance. It's that forward geometry experience and the way they put the bike together, that's what makes these Mondrakers really shine. I can't wait to get my teeth into a proper live ride review on this. But uh, going back into the rest of the numbers, uh, 455mm uh, chainstay, so medium length, not bad, for, certainly not bad for an e-bike. And it's a 1265 wheelbase on this large. Uh, weight with the alloy frame is 24.9 kilos. So, you know, that's, to be fair, it's not bad. Uh, it's slightly lighter than the white I reviewed recently. Uh, I think, you know, just, I think, yeah, by about 400 grams. Uh, but there are lighter bikes you can get with a Bosch motor. And if weight's a real concern for you, then obviously there's the Crafty Carbon range as well. Uh, in terms of kit, uh, this bike comes in just under six grand in the UK. And kit, you know, it's it's okay. It's uh, kind of a mix. Uh, it starts off G, uh, SRAM GX at the back, but you've only got NX shifters and then it's an SX chain and an SX cassette on there. So it's an 1150 rather than a 1050. And it's kind of the heavier duty, uh, heavier cassette on the back. But, you know, I guess if you're going to have a heavyweight uh, cassette anywhere on an e-bike it makes the most sense uh, you've got a race face effect e-bike crank there uh, but a proper SRAM X-Sync again steel chaining there and also good to see a 34 tooth on there you know because you have got you know 85 newton meters of boost uh, with this Bosch motor on there and you can see it gets a custom plastic cover on there that's an exclusive from Andreka and a nice big skid plate underneath I mean bottom bracket height isn't that low actually it's about 350 mil uh, although from what I've ridden so far it feels it, dynamically it feels much planted and, and lower you know it certainly doesn't that sounds like quite high bottom bracket but it doesn't feel it on the bike uh, in terms of wheel spec you've got the awesome uh, DT Swiss uh, 1900 hybrids with the extra heavy duty spokes, 30 mil internal rims, and then you've got Maxxis Minion DHR2, uh, 3C Max Terra XO Plus on the rear, 29 by 2.6, and then you've got a uh, Minion DHF on the front. Again, same size, same compound, and both XO Plus protection uh, carcass. I mean, that's the slightly uh, heavier duty carcass, but it's still definitely a trail carcass uh, rather than a full double D carcass or a full downhill carcass. So, you know, potentially you might want a heavier duty tyre at the back end because this bike, you know, 150 mil travel, but, you know, all that forward geometry handling, it's likely to properly haul. I mean, like I say, uh, I've not ridden it properly yet, but we will get it on the trail and we'll find out just how fast this bike goes. Uh, again, uh, SRAM G2 brakes rather than code brakes, because, you know, I mean, I think what it is, is Mondraker have kind of had to save some of the heavier duty component for the... Uh, 
the level bikes, you know, because obviously they're the big hitting bikes. They want to make some differentiation in there. So they get code and they get heavier duty tyre. Uh, whereas, but you're still getting 200 mil rotors, front and rear. So plenty of leverage on there. And then you've got SDG saddle. Uh, you've got the on off, which is uh, Mondraker's own brand, 170 mil dropper post, 150 mil in the medium, 125 in the small. You know, really nice, neat little seat collar on there. And as you can see, the welding's all really really tidy all the way through and big old uh, chain you know big old uh, clevis joints on the swing arm there you know it's a really really solid bike here uh, up front you've got more on-off components you've got the sulfur bar that's a 780 mil bar and this 35 mil stem i mean one real highlight you get on this bike is the uh, keox head unit so i should have turned this on uh, I'll just let that light up there. So, yeah, there we go. We have uh, the Keox head unit, and uh, that gives you a whole load of different functions. You know, it, you can do a route in your smartphone app. It gives you the battery there. Uh, you can sync it with your phone. That's kind of your general sort of... Uh, speed tracking uh, format with you know how much boost you're getting as well uh clock range i mean you can preset all these as well there's loads and loads of information what i really like is it actually gives you the amount of power you're putting in as well so it's, it has a training function and so if anyone's saying you're not working hard on an e-bike you can refer them directly to this screen and going actually pal i'm still doing 300 watts but the bike's adding 250 so that's why we're cracking on it and you know and it even takes your heart rate and gives you uh, cadence on there as well so you know if you like that side of things don't think an e-bike isn't for you uh like i say on the brakes uh it's g2rs it's, you know, again fairly basic but this is the entry model bike in the range and then their own grips there and obviously uh drop a post lever under there you know nice chunky uh sculpted lever on there and uh, that multi-function i mean I'll, I'll be honest i've ridden it twice i'm still getting my head around which buttons do which but uh you know, you've got power button there, power button there, and then your functions for the uh, different head unit displays. So all sort of going on, and obviously that uh, head unit will harvest a lot more ride data for you that you can feed back through your smartphone. Uh, in here is the battery. I mean, it's fully removable, or you can charge it in situ. Uh, but obviously there's no bottle cage mount on there, so that's now underneath there. I mean, plenty of room for it, to be fair, and then obviously you can strap all your goodness on there. And that big old broad down tube uh, actually it acts as a really really effective mudguard. So you know that's a bonus. That's a bonus feature for riding in the UK. So I've just flipped the bike round to uh, get you a clearer view without the chain ring in the way. So you know there's your Bosch motor in there. I mean fairly conventional uh, mounting on there, but they still took the rear wheel in fairly tight. Like I say, and you can see the linkage for the zero suspension in there. Uh, so what you're getting is a shock that bottoms out onto the lower linkage and is squeezed by the top. None of the loads are going directly into the frame there. It's still relatively slim stays there and then these big, uh, much bigger chain stay and then the brake is just sat in there on a post mount and that's the magnet for the motor sensor which is actually mounted really neatly inside the dropout there. So, you know, no chance of that getting knocked or damaged uh, and it affecting your motor function. So that's the next stage really, uh, get pedals on, uh, make sure my leg is properly up to uh, taking a bit more of a beating off-road and then let's get the live ride review on this done. Like I say, been aching to get some Mondrakers onto the site so it's brilliant to uh, have, have the crafty here and thanks very much for Silverfish for thinking about my leg and sending me an e-bike first. Uh, you're going to be seeing more bikes from uh, Silverfish in the UK coming onto the site from now on so thanks very much for their support uh, thanks very much to my Patreon supporters as well uh, whose names are coming up in front of you now they give a small monthly pledge to the kind of general just funding and upkeep of the site uh, help me buy equipment help me sort of pay for the time filming unsponsored edits uh, so if you like what I'm doing with the channel please consider uh, joining those guys uh, with a small monthly donation but for now, uh, click for notifications, uh, give it a thumbs up, that really, really helps. Uh, make sure you subscribe if you're not already a subscriber, and tell your mates about it as well. Share the uh, bejesus out of this channel, that would be much appreciated. But for now, I've been Guy Kestivan on Guy Kest TV, doing an unboxing talk through on the brand new 2021 Mondraker Crafty R.